All right, so today we're going to make a Chrome extension. Chrome extensions are the buttons that go up here. They can interact with web pages and do some other things. Ours is going to uh, persist some data across different web pages and allow you to select the web page and then load up some data. So to do Chrome extension, uh, you make a folder. You got to have a manifest. So on Google's page here, I'm just going to copy this manifest over. New file, manifest.json, paste it in. Um, browser action is the button itself. It wants an icon PNG. It wants to open a pop-up HTML to begin with. Permissions, it wants permission to access the active tab, which is fine. And this URL, which we don't care about. Let's get rid of that. Um, great. Uh, I'm going to pop over and add in my icon, which is like a little forklift icon. Cool. And then that's fine. Let's add that pop-up HTML. So new file, pop-up.html. And let's just add an h1 tag, test h1. So from here, our Chrome extension is ready to be loaded. So Chrome colon double slash extension, load unpacked extension. Make sure developer mode is checked. Choose your extension. And there we go, load it up. And if I open my box, you can see there is my test. So one thing to note is we want some functionality on that pop-up page. There's three places for functionality in Chrome extensions. There's the functionality of the pop-up itself, there's the functionality of the background, which is uh, the glue behind everything going on with your Chrome extension, right? Whether when Chrome is running in the background and between different pop-ups and different web pages, so there's the background. And then there's the script that's interacting with the web page itself. So there's a web page script, a background script, and a pop-up script. So we're going to have a form on here and a button, so we're going to need a uh, a, a, a pop-up.js. So we can say script source equals popup.js, right, script, and we can make it, new file, popup.js, and then we can say console.log, hello, and if we reload our extension, you can see uh, when I open it, let's open up a console over here, which we have open, if I open this up, it opens, and there's no console message, and that's because you actually have to inspect the popup itself, like this, and if we do that, you can see, okay, so reload our extension now that we've typed that in, and inspect our pop-up. And we still uh, do not get our hello. Uh, did I spell something wrong? Let's see. I spelled source wrong. Boom. That would definitely cause it not to work. So reload. Chrome is deciding to not work. Reload. Okay. And if I inspect the pop-up, you can see there we get our hello. Now notice that as soon as I close this, that inspector goes away, which is super, super annoying. So we explained the glue of the background layer. So that's actually going to come super handy right now because we can actually log out to the background layer and not have to have this problem where the inspector goes away every time. So to do that, let's go ahead and add in our, uh, our background script. So to do that, you just, to your manifest file, you tell it what your background scripts are. So background scripts, background JS. So new file background.js and from here I can say console.log background and then from the pop-up now uh, instead of saying console there I can actually define I can actually re overwrite console to be the background console instead so console is now the background so chrome.extension.get background page console so now if I save that and reload you can see now we get this background page inspector and when I load this you can see I get background and if I open this you can see I get hello and you can see that it's reloading it every single time. So this is another thing to note. This JavaScript is loading every single time. There's no persistent data in here. So we'll get to that in a second. But the cool thing is this, extent, this uh, console will stay up here now, which is really great. It'll even stay up there as I refresh the page. So super helpful. So I'm going to paste in now all the HTML I wrote for the pop-up before, since that's not really important to the tutorial. So boom. And what that looks like is uh, reload the extension. And when I open it up, you can see, here we go, we get a little form with a SKU and a button. Now, what we want to have happen here is I want to be able to put a SKU in. And then when I say, or when I click the button and go away, I want to, that SKU to still be here when I open it back up. I want to persist some data. Now, there's two ways to do that. You could have used local storage or you could actually just load the data into your background page and the background page could take care of it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So um, in our pop-up page, right now we have this really messy, you know, we don't have any organized JavaScript here. So what we're going to do with our pop-up JS is we're actually going to create an app, uh, an app object. So var app equals, this is where all of our stuff's going to load. And we're going to have an init function 
that is going to actually, when our whole app is initialized, we're going to call that. So in order for that to actually happen, we need a listener for when our page is ready. So DOM content loaded, app init. Now, the other thing that's bothering me is all these errors on this, all these syntax errors on the page. Not syntax errors, but, uh, but variable errors. So I'm just going to add some globals to my syntax highlighter. So say Chrome is fine and document is fine. It's not going to yell at me about those anymore. Okay. Console is being, it's not used yet. So now we have a little uh, object structure for our init function. So our first thing we want to do with our init function is going to be um, cache some element references. So this is our script that's going to be for our, our pop up page. So we want to reference the input box and the button. Okay, so here's some references to our references to our input box to our input. So SKU is the input and then SKU input is the button itself. I know those are bad names. I'm sorry about that. And now we need a event listener for when you click the button, right? So when we click the button, input click the button, we're going to run this function. So console.log button click. Okay, so there's that. Let's refresh our extension. Let's open up our console, open this up, and when I click the button, button click, button click. And what we can do is say console.log, I apologize for the helicopter. Okay, so what we can do is when we button click, I'm going to take a look at the skew.value. This is the DOM element.value. Okay, this is not jQuery, I'm just using dollar signs. Refresh the page, and now when we open this up and we say ASDF and use this, you can see button click ASDF. So we got an event listener on our button, and we're able to get the value. So now that we have our value and we have the button click, we need to actually send it to the background page. So this is a little bit different. In order for the background page to co or to interact and communicate with the pop-up page, we actually have to send a message. Okay. So what that looks like is Chrome dot runtime dot send message, and now you can send a message over to uh, send a message over to the background script to play with. So what we're going to do is send them, we're going to send over the skew. Um, so we're going to send over skew.value. Okay. So there we go, skew.value. So now our background page. So let's let's get our background page organized. So var background equals. So this is going to be an app as well. Okay. And then our background page. We also probably want an init for our background page, just so that we're keeping the same kind of app structure as we did on the previous page. So so init colon function and this is what happens when the background is initted okay when your app is actually loaded up for the first time but we actually have to call that so background.init so this is our app startup right so our background startup so now we're able to write code inside of our init function here so we actually need our init function to start listening for those messages so what we can do here is we can say uh, chrome dot runtime so same as before but this time instead of mess instead of send message we're gonna say on message right dot add listener listen listener and that's going to take in um, a function that's got three parameters which I'll tell you about in a second those three parameters are the request itself the sender so data about the sender and then a, a function called send response or whatever you want it to be that actually can send a message back to the pop-up page so you can go here and do stuff and then respond back to the other message it's pretty cool uh, again let's fix our syntax slider here globals chrome okay so request sender send response so let's just let's just say console.log message received and we're just gonna say um, request which should be our message. So we'll save that and we'll refresh our app. And if we open this up and we say test and say use this, uh, request is not defined. So I probably spelled it wrong and I totally spelled request wrong. Awesome. Let's save that, refresh our page, open our pop up, write the word test. Boom, message received, test. Perfect. Now there's one problem with this. Sending a single piece of message over doesn't really give us a lot of clean, organized code. What I really want is I want to send a message and I want to call a function on my background object. I want it to call a set skew function that knows how to set the skew on my object so I can save it here. I want my skew saved on my object and I want this to happen. So console.log setting skew, right? That's, this is what I want right here. This would be great. Or something like this. So 
what we're going to do to achieve this is we're actually going to pass in a function the function we want to call. So we're act instead of passing in this, we're going to pass in function equals set skew, right? And then we're going to pass it whatever other value we want. Okay, so we're going to pass it set skew, and then skew value is the rest of the stuff that we're going to send it. Oh, that's right. I need this is a bad object skew colon. I'm sorry about that. Okay, that's why the arrow is there. So the function key is set skew, and the skew key is this. The key here is that there's a function skew set. So if we were to send this message along and receive it just like we did a second ago, if I reload this now, open it up, say test, you can see that we want to call the function set skew and give it the value of test. So this is kind of like a generic thing now. At this point, we've got a generic function. So anytime we get a message that has fn in it, I want to call a method. So to do that, we're going to have a kind of a generic message, message receiving system. So all we're going to do is instead of doing something specifically, we're going to loop through the. Uh, we're going to we're going to make we're going to make sure that uh, request. So if request.fn is in our background object, so our main object, if we have found the function, then we're going to go ahead and call it. So we're going to say background, and then request.fn, and we're going to call that and pass it all of our parameters. So request sender and send response and we're gonna let the other functions handle it so that means that our send our set skew function it's not gonna be as simple as that but it's gonna get these three parameters right so I'll be able to say request.skew now so again what's happening here is init is gonna listen listen for any messages and route them to functions which is really cool so we actually just so now we're able to call a function from the other file here so we're able to call set skew which is going to say setting skew request dot skew so let's just test that that works so reload our extension open it up write the word test setting skew test which is great so now that we've actually can do that let's go act let's go ahead and actually set it so I'll leave the log in there and we'll just say um, this dot uh, skew equals request dot skew now the word this refers to our object background which is where we have the skew set so we're able to do that now we've got the skew set I'm gonna have another function called get skew that we're gonna actually use on the other page to retrieve the skew okay so we're not so when we load the page we're gonna call this get skew function so get skew function again we're gonna have these three func these three uh, parameters because this is the same type of function and here all we're gonna do is we're gonna instead of saying request because we're not gonna be sending anything we're just gonna ask for data we can use this send response to actually send that skew say so this dot skew okay now let me <clears throat> let me be clear of what's going on here um, this is gonna say something can call this and get a response back and say this is what the skew is Okay, so that's what this is going to happen. So let's actually do that now. So this is only when we click that we actually want to send it. So in this case, our new one is going to say when we load, this is our init function, and say we're going to send a message called get skew now. So I want to send a message get skew. I'm not going to pass it anything else. There's nothing else I want to pass it. Oops. All I want to do is get a skew back. Okay, get skew. And so how does that function get called? Well, that's the next parameter, right? This is the response. So we're going to send a message. And then that send send response call gets funneled to this function here with whatever data we wanted. In this case, response. So I'm going to say console.log uh, pop up got response response. Okay, so I'm going to refresh the page now and uh, open this up. And it's going to say pop up got response nothing. And if I say test and click it, setting skew test. Now if I open it back up, now it says pop up got response test. And that's because the background's always running. We were able to set the data on the background and we send we sent a message that says go get a save skew. I had a save skew, I can load it back. And now you can see, instead of just console logging it out, I can actually set the value. So I can say um, skew.value equals our response now. So, if we refresh the page, I open it up, and there's nothing there. Well, object, object. I'll fix that in a minute. We test, set it to test, and now I close it, and open it back up, and now our value test is there and persisted. So let's fix that object, object. It's setting it to string, um, because our 
skew is set to an object initially. We don't want that. We want it set to an empty string initially. So we can refresh the page. When we open it up, there's nothing there. I can say the word test, click it, open it back up, and there's our persisted value.